book of Ephesians, Paul describes a prayer that he often prays for the Christian church. It's a prayer that they would come to know God, that they would be able to know Him, really know Him. The prayer is in chapter 3, and this is how Paul describes the way he's praying for the people. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul's using an illustration. He depicts a volume in space that has a length, a width, and a height. And that volume in space, he describes as the love of Christ. He says this is a space that we're intended to explore, to really know it, every little corner of it, every piece of it, to move about it. But the love of Christ is immense. In fact, Paul prays that we will have strength to somehow comprehend its dimensions, but in the next breath, he admits that this volume of the love of Christ surpasses knowledge. Now let's imagine that the top surface of this volume is like the surface of the ground, and the vast space under the ground is like the love of Christ. Now if we take a closer look, imagine yourself as a plant, having been seeded in the soil of the love of Christ. As a follower of Christ, your roots begin to grow. At first the roots are small, just barely poking into the love of Christ. Your experience of God is limited to what your roots are touching. At first, since they're just barely poking into the upper crust of Christ's love, that love might appear to be small, maybe even shallow. You might even mistake the love of Christ to be similar in nature to the kind of romantic love that you see in Hollywood movies. If you pursue your relationship with God further, your roots will grow deeper, stronger, thicker, more stout, and they'll begin to spread wider. As you read the Bible, you learn more about God's character, what's important to Him, and what's not. You read about the things He's done. When you pray to Him, you realize that you're talking to God and He is listening and you see the evidence of answered prayer in your life time and time again. You learn how to worship God with your voice, maybe even with an instrument. You learn how to worship God through your work and with all the things that you do during the day. You have your own personal experiences with God. You go through a dark time of maybe even depression and you feel His presence comforting you. You go through times when you're physically sick and you experience His healing. Maybe you lose your job, and God provides everything that you need. And as you read the Bible, you can even read about how other people long ago experienced God in many different ways that you'll probably never have an opportunity to experience. And you can see new things about God's love and His faithfulness toward those people from long ago. And all of this, you can explore more and more of the love of Christ that immense space under the ground that surpasses knowledge. This is all a part of a healthy process of growing in Christian maturity. But everything I've just described can be done in isolation. You can experience all this growth in your relationship with God alone. But if you take that approach, your knowledge of the love of Christ will be extremely limited. The years of your life are just too short. You can't have nearly enough experiences with God. You can't read His Word enough times. There's only time for so many answered prayers or prayers that feel like they went unanswered. Left on your own, you'll only have enough time to barely poke the surface. And this is why the Apostle Paul inserts four very important words into his prayer for the people. If you read it too quickly, you'll gloss right over it. He says, that you may have the strength to comprehend with all the saints 
What is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ? The saints are your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. The people in your life who are also following Christ in your church, in your family, at work. You've got a brother over here with a whole different set of life experiences with God. Ways he's seen God work and move in his life that you'll never see in your life. You've got another brother over there with yet another set of experiences. A root system that looks kind of like yours at the core, but then again, it looks nothing like yours. It has its own unique shape and size. You've even got a sister way over there who lives in a different country and speaks a different language. Her government persecutes Christians, so you know her set of life experiences with God is nothing like yours. Each of us will continue to grow in our relationship with God in our own isolation unless we choose to comprehend with all the saints the volume of the love of Christ. Christians are meant to interact with one another. We're meant to have relationships with one another, to share stories of God's faithfulness, to share stories of ways that God made us angry, maybe stories about times we prayed to Him and He seemed silent for a very long time, times when God, obe uh, when God commanded us to do something and we obeyed and we nailed it, and other times when we disobeyed and we blew it. When we grow in our relationship with God, together, as a unified church, our root systems become intertwined. All of a sudden, you now have access to other people's experiences with God, second-hand, third-hand, even fourth-hand, which gives you an opportunity to explore the vast volume of the love of Christ to a greater extent than you would have been able to otherwise. When a part of your personal root structure becomes weakened for some reason, you can draw strength through the roots of your many, many brothers and sisters around you, their faith in God, their personal experiences of God's goodness. Here's the point. If you're serious about knowing God better, you cannot do it alone. God has intended for us and he desires that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may have the strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that we may be filled with all the fullness of God.